Hey there, YouTubers. So we're going to do a comparison video. I've uh, broke out uh, four of, say, the 10 or 11 CPUs that I own. What we've got is the i3-9100F, the i3-9100, the i5-9400F, and in the front, I've got the i5-8400. Now, uh, so what we're going to look at a little bit is performance of these. I'll probably throw up some benchmarks info from uh, CPUs or benchmark just so we can uh, kind of see how similar they are. Uh, all across the board for these, these four chips as far as performance goes. And... Uh, I want to talk about uh, the positives and negatives of each one, right? So let's get into that part first. Value, overall value of these nowadays. This is your low cost chip out of these. And it is running around $99 to uh, say $113, somewhere in there. The i3-9100 is anywhere from 122 to 130. And the i5-9400F is right around 140 to 150, depending on where you get it. Now your i5-8400 should be about $200. Uh, of course, you can buy that used. I think the cheapest I saw on good old eBay is about 140, 150. So, you know, just based on that, if the performance was the same, you would think this would be the best deal for you, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. It's always one of those it depends kind of things. So, let's look at these one at a time. Your i3-9100F has four cores, four threads, runs at 3.6 gigahertz, is a 65 watt chip. This was released in uh, early 2019. Um, I want to say I bought mine in March uh, of 2019. And, uh, you know, honestly, I am uh, been pretty happy with this processor. I've installed it quite a few times. And performance-wise, it uh, it's ranked about 47th, I believe, currently on the uh, CPUs or benchmark for CPUs, which basically this guy is going to be in the same place. So that's pretty good. There's a lot of CPUs that it is, uh, uh, I won't say leapfrog, but it, it's ahead of. And therefore, you know, for a 9th gen chip, it is, it's a pretty good processor. I actually have, currently, I'm using an i3 um, 9100F to do um, Autodesk 3DS animation. Now, I have a lot of better processors, but it just so happens that that uh, software is installed on that computer. And while that software would probably do better with something with some more cores in it uh it is you know performing decently so i have not messed with it now what are the negatives with this chip one is that you need a graphics card wow magically that graphics card just appeared um so that is uh you know could be a negative right so the price difference between these two uh doesn't look so great anymore because these graphics cards aren't you know necessarily cheap obviously if you're going to go buy a new graphics card uh i'm not sure what the, the lowest price is on something but let's say a gtx uh, 1650 150 dollars you want to get a graphics card on ebay that's used it's halfway decent um you're probably talking at least 70 dollars so your investment just to get this guy up and running uh, went from, you know, 
$100 for the CPU to at least $160, $170 if you factor in the graphics card. Where for $122 to $130, you can have that one up and running. Now, of course, with a graphics card, you're going to get a lot better performance, um, not only in your gaming stuff, but uh, if you happen to use a software like HitFilm Pro, and uh, I believe even my 3DS uh, animation and even definitely uh, computer-aided design software will show uh, improved performance having a graphics card. So all important things there. So another thing to factor in would be that you are going to need a compatible motherboard. Now for some of you, that might mean buying the uh, Z390 motherboard to make it work. But if you check out my channel, you'll see there's quite a few motherboards that I've gone through and actually uh, popped in one of these i3 uh, 9100s and shown that you can boot to BIOS, you can actually boot to Windows uh, but if, as long as you can boot to BIOS you can update the BIOS uh, to make it even more compatible so you don't necessarily need these super expensive Z390 motherboards uh, and even some of the motherboards are coming out with revision 2's on them which basically means they're compatible for 9th gen as well as 8th gen. So things to factor in. Um, motherboard across the board actually uh, is not going to cost you any more than the 8th the gen chip. So not a huge deal there. Previously, you know, when I had discussions and it seemed like everybody was saying, oh, you have to have either 9th gen motherboard or you have to um, have an HN chip to update your BIOS. In a lot of cases I've proven that to be wrong. Now it isn't the, the truth for every motherboard but uh, we've gone through uh, at least five motherboards plus two OEM desktops which would include a, a Dell 3670 Inspiron and an HP NV computer. Both of those started off as HNs and I was able to put a 9th gen i3-9100 in them and made them work. So, all right, let's move on. All right, so I think, you know, pretty much we've talked about these. Really good performance. Need a graphics card? Don't need a graphics card. Talk about the price. Performance-wise, these, from what I have seen, perform identical. Um, the single core scores that I was getting and the uh, quad core and multi core are basically about the same, uh, falling in that uh, single core of 121, quad core of 445, and multi core of 455. And that, that's from the CPU user benchmark. Hopefully, I'll remember to put a screenshot of that on there. All right, so moving over here to the right. Um, the i5-9400F, which has uh, six cores and six threads. And it is definitely um, got some improvements in performance over the i5-8400. So your i5-9400F runs at 2.9 gigahertz, 65 watt chip. This was released in quarter one of 2019, and I believe I picked mine up in January of uh, 2019. I actually was one of the first people, I believe, on YouTube that uh, got that chip, uh, at least because I, uh, you know, not that my videos are super popular, but uh, that video actually got some uh, quite a few views. So now, performance-wise, um, they're saying about 4% better performance over the i5-8400. I happen to think it's it's greater than that, in my opinion. And uh, it just seems, it seems like it outperforms that. But, uh, you know, of course, I've put better equipment, uh, peripheries, 
with that i5-9400F, so that may have something to do with it. But overall, uh, they are very similar if you compare the i5 to the i5-8400, the i5-9400F. The uh, single core score is very similar and quad core very similar as well as the multi-core. They are all three to five percent greater for the i5-9400F. So negatives with this, need a graphics card again. So right there, your investment for this uh, just went up, you know, $60, $70 uh, compared to the i5-9400, which we're not going to talk about because I don't own one, but uh, that would fall, I think, around 189 to buy that. So um, there's something to factor in. If, if you don't need the uh, performance for a graphics card, you may want to consider the i5-9400F, which will not be as expensive an uh, investment if you don't need the graphics card. So, once again, we talked about the motherboards earlier. You not necessarily will need a uh, 9th gen motherboard. You should be able to get away with uh, pretty much any 300 series motherboard. And uh, you may be required to get a 8th gen chip to update the BIOS to make this work. But as I've said on this channel, we've done at least five uh, computers where we put 9th gen chips in them and uh, been able to update the BIOS with the 9th gen in the socket, uh, getting it to boot to BIOS. Now, what are the positives to the i5-8400, which we have here? Um, and I actually have quite a few of those because of uh, the desktops that I have bought from HP and Dell. Uh, I think we have at least three of those lying around here, but uh, they um, do not need graphics card to get these started. They will work with pretty much any 300 series motherboard, at least that I'm aware of. They're uh, proven technology, obviously. And performance-wise, they are uh, quite decent. Now, is this worth spending $200 when you can buy this guy uh, for a lot less? Or you can buy the i5-9400, which is 3 to 5% faster for uh, less money. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense why uh, one would even bother buying this one. Uh, plus, for most of you... If you're out there surfing the internet and all that crap, this chip is way better priced for you, right? $122 to $140, or $130, excuse me, $122 to $130. So getting this guy um, for you that are just, you know, surfing the internet, maybe doing MS Word, uh, pretty much most of your stuff that only requires single core uh, this is probably your best bet, all right? Those of you that are new to building uh, CPUs, that's something else I didn't talk about. So if you think that you are going to have issues um, and are a little freaked out about the whole process of building a computer, then you probably should get the i5-8400. That would be the only reason why I would say go with that. If it's your first time building a computer, um, and you're wanting to go somewhat cheap on the motherboard and the other peripherals, you probably need to get something like that, okay? Um, or this processor here, but just ensure that you are set up with a motherboard that's going to work. Now, all of my i3s, I eventually updated the motherboards, uh, updated the BIOS for those motherboards, and there is a good reason for that. Um, just because you want to make sure that even though that motherboard is somewhat compatible, at least to boot the BIOS, right, that all of the other things that it's needed to run smoothly, um, that you have gone ahead and updated it. Now, is it required? Not necessarily. 
unless you find that your computer is not running very well, then there is a possibility that it's related to the BIOS. And, uh, you know, updating the BIOS is uh, one of those things that you only want to do it when it's necessary because there's always the opportunity to wreck your motherboard. Whether it's a power failure that happens in the middle of an update, um, somebody restarting their computer. Um, like the other day, and this didn't happen to me. Um, the other day, I tried to uh, shoot a product video for updating BIOS for a motherboard, and then I realized that I hadn't zoomed the camera out and I wanted to go back. And I almost hit the reset button on the computer, which may have uh, ruined the motherboard as it was updating. So keep that in mind. Once you start updating a BIOS, make sure you got the right version of the BIOS that goes with that motherboard and ensure that you're not going to have any interruptions. Don't do it during a thunderstorm. Uh, don't mess around with, you know, turning the power off and on. And make sure your computer has uh, the proper power supply that goes with uh, the equipment that's in there in case it, for some reason, uh, craps out on you, which can happen. All right, well, that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you got something out of it. And, uh, you know, for me, for I think for most of you that are out there building new computers uh, and have not the level of experience that some of your brothers and sisters out on the YouTube might have. Your best pet is probably going with this chip or that chip if you're really new to it. If you want to add a little possible headache depending on the video card that, that you've selected, um, then you know this guy and this guy provide pretty good um, performance which uh, for a lot of you, you probably won't notice a difference between these two chips. Um, though there is, you know, obvious performance gains between those two. And that's one thing we didn't really discuss was performance between the 9100 and the 9400. We talked about the 8400, but... Uh, So these, uh, these chips are pretty much in the same ballpark on the CPUs or benchmark. Now overall, it does say the i5 is about 17% better. But when you start to look at um, how that breaks down, you'll actually find that the single core score of the i3 is better. The multi-core and the quad core of the i5 is better, um, hence where the uh, performance is coming in there. But uh, you know, for most people, you will be happy enough with that processor. So, all right, that's all I have in this video. Thanks for checking it out. Please like, please subscribe.